Uh, hi everyone, I'm Zach with HKN. Um, today I'm going to talk about, well, ultimately we're going to talk about the, the Viterbi algorithm. Um, it's a common thing to have to deal with in, say, the di digital comm class. Um, so the Viterbi algorithm is a way to decode um, a received bit stream um, that's been conv convolutionally coded. So first we're going to talk about a convolutional coder and what that does and, and um, we're going to see why it's why the Viterbi algorithm works to decode it. So, so in general um, we'd have a convolutional encoder so this this is the mechanism that would be on your sending side of the communication system. Um, the Viterbi algorithm would actually be running on the receiver side of the system. So we'll, and we'll show why, why, the, why the Viterbi running at the receiver works for decoding this. So um, this would be a convolutional coder with, um, these are kind of, these are just terms we use to describe convolutional coders. We have rate one half. Now that means that um, so your inputs are going to be bits, one at a time, um, either a one or a zero. Now, you're, we have this mechanism, which we'll talk about a little more in a second, but at the output end here, we see we have two different things. We have something I'm calling C sub zero, C sub one. Now, that, those are just two different bits. Those are going to be, two, yeah, two different bits, and we're going to take both of them as an output for each one bit we input. So um, the rate is referring to input bits over output bits. Um, your input sequence will be half as long as your output sequence. Um, this other thing called constraint length, which I, I denoted L, I don't know what you'd usually see it called, um, is, as, as you see, our, our, co our, output, um, our output bit, or one of our output bits, involves um, at most, okay, our, our output at, involves at most three different bits. Okay, so I guess I should explain more what this machine's doing. These little boxes with these in them are delays. Um, it's, so it's a state machine, or a shift register, I guess. Um, and I've denoted the different s states of the machine, S sub zero, S sub one. Um, S sub zero is just whatever bit was input at T minus one. S sub one is whatever bit was input at T minus two, right? We're jamming bits in here, um, and they're kind of moving through this register, and then they're just getting forgotten about after they get jammed out this end. Um, you'll learn how about shift registers in a CSE class somewhere, maybe. Um, now, now, we, and these these uh, little boxes here, these elements are modulo two adders. So, we can um, come up with a little table here. Um, we're going to write down what the what the different states and um, inputs and corresponding outputs of this are. So the information we're going to put in the table. Let's see if I can find a good marker. So first of all, I've I've already listed. Um, there's four possible states that this machine can be in. Right? Um, we have S sub zero and S sub one can both take on values either one, zero or one. Um, so, you know, we could have S sub zero, zero, you get it. Um, there's four different, there's two to the two different states that can have. Now we can also, we can input zero or one, right? At any time we could input a zero or a one. So for each state the machine's in, we have to consider inputting either a zero or a one and see what the result is. So the possible inputs for each state, I'm gonna write a zero, one, zero, one, zero, one. Now we will list uh, our output bits given those. Now, I have those written down already, and so, um, but you can check my, my math, um, just modulo to addition with the bits that are connected to each adder. So for this, I have that this is zero, zero. I have that this is one, one. Let me actually just grab my paper. Um, I have that This is zero one, and this is one zero. I have that this is one one, and this is zero zero. And finally, this is one zero and zero one. All right, so, so we see we get, we're getting two output bits for every one of our input bits, and the output um, 
also kind of depends on the state, right? We there there's four different things we get when we input a one, depending on what the state of the machine is. Um, and then finally, I'm going to put over here. Now this this is kind of an interesting thing. It makes us able to make a like a trellis. We can we know from the just the physical way this machine works that the fact that it's a shift register and our input sequence is getting put in one bit at a time, we know what the next state will be, right? Depending on what the input was. So if we're in zero zero state zero zero and we input a zero, if we're in state zero zero. Um, and we input a zero at the next state when when everything shifts, it's still going to be in state zero zero, right? If we're in state zero zero and we input a one and then everything shifts, we're going to be in state one zero. Um, similarly, if we're in state one zero and we input a zero, we'll be in state zero one. If we input a one, we'll be in state one one. If we're in state zero one and we input a zero, we will go to zero zero. If we input one, we'll go to one zero. If we're in one one and we input a zero, we'll get zero one. And if we input a one, we'll put get one one. Okay, so that's a lot of zeros and ones all in a table there. Um, but there is a slightly more convenient way to express all of this information. Now, if we notice, we have um, we have four possible states, and then. That there's eight entries here, but there's duplicates of each state. There's four possible next states too, right? So what we do is we draw out a little, we call it a, a trellis, and we're actually going to call this the unit trellis because really, um, yeah, I'll, I'll just write it out. Okay, so we're going to list our states, our possible states here. Um, one, zero. All right, so we're just gonna kind of keep those there, and we're gonna draw, we're gonna draw little nodes um, that correspond to those states. Okay, and we're gonna draw two columns of those. Now we we think of these as the um, this column of dots is like the the possible states that time t and this column is the possible states at time t equal to one, right? Um, and we can draw how, um, we can draw transitions, all right? So we see from this table here that if we're in state zero, zero, originally at time t, um, we can only transition to state zero, zero or one, zero, okay? So that is to say the only possible transitions from, from here are to here, and to there. Now we'll also, um, actually, I'm going to go back through just for aesthetic reasons and write the inputs and outputs. Um, so if we're in state one zero, we see we can only transition to state zero one or one one. That says we either go here or we go there. And let's see, for this one, we can either go two, where is that, all the way up to the top, zero, zero, yep, we can go all the way up to zero, zero, or we can go to one, zero, and then finally, we can go either from one, one up to zero, one, or remain in one, one. All right, so you see those lines define the transitions that are possible. Now, we can also, we could write down on those lines, we could write what the, um, the we can write down the inputs and outputs corresponding to each transition. Now, if we're in state zero and we input a zero, well, okay, so we're gonna kind of denote our. Um, I'm gonna write input outputs kind of like input slash output. Okay. Um, we are, whoops. All right, so if we're in this state and our input zero. All right, zero. Our output is zero, zero. Right. If we're in this state and our input's one, right, one. Our output is one, one. And this marker's terrible for writing small, so. If we are in this state and we input a zero, 
we get a 0, 0, 1 is what we'll output. If we're in this state and we input a 1, we get input 1, output 1, 0. All right, so let's deal with these two. If we're in that state and we get a 0, we input 0, we output 1, 1. And if we input a 1 here, we output 0, 0. And finally, if we are in, um, nope, I already marked that one. If we're making this transition, that would be a 0 input. And we get an output 1, 0. And if we're making this transition, it would be a 1 input. And it would be a 0, 1. All right, so. Um, this right here, it might be um, what you'd see more on a homework problem or exam. Um, this little diagram right here contains all the same information this, this gr uh, chart does, even more possibly. Oh, that's a little more visual, right? Um, so this, this is like the preferred, the preferred method of writing this down, but th this is what that means, right? Sometimes on a problem, you'll only get this, and you'll kind of wonder, what is that? All right, so... Um, I'm going to pause here just to erase something real quickly, and I'll do the Viterbi algorithm for um, a, a given received sequence. All right.